श्री श्री रास बिहारिनी जू की जय हो सब वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण कंटिन्यूइंग ब्रज किशोरी सेवा ट्रस्ट रीडिंग्स ऑफ श्री हरि राय जी बड़े शिक्षा पत्र इकतालीस शिक्षा पत्र फोर्टी वन लेटर्स ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन फ्रॉम श्री हरि राय जी डे ट्वेंटी फाइव लेटर सिक्स वर्सेस नाइन टू ट्वेल्व जय श्री कृष्ण It is easily possible for an embodied soul gripped by ignorance and of limited understanding to become confused. A child might grab a poisonous snake not knowing that it is not an enjoyable plaything. Similarly, an embodied soul might consider this material world to be the source of happiness, just as the loving father would forcefully remove the snake, so Sri Krishna forcefully removes the devotee from this delusion. The embodied soul being gripped by ignorance and mentally confused is ca- incapable of truly knowing the lord's form even though the confusion may be minimal the embodied soul can still not get over the ignorance of i me and mine that soul may know that its body is very temporary and that time passes and it spares no one even so it gets wrapped up in egotistical possessiveness and is gripped by anxiety lust anger greed pride envy and material grief because it considers this body its relationships and its temporary life to be the source of happiness even then the lord will release you from this illusion the next verse will tell you how that was tika 9 tika 10 even though an embodied soul believes its material life to be the source of happiness the lord destroys this delusion in his devotees by taking away their wealth if their mind is fixed on it taking away worldly relations if their mind is attached to them and thus removing their mind from anything else to which they may be erroneously attached due to its ignorant nature the soul may thus have to endure many sorrows but the lord does not relent or let their selfish desires be fulfilled for example an innocent child runs to grab a poisonous snake as a plaything and not knowing that it may bite the parents who care for the child prevent it from grabbing the snake and remove the child from the danger of death In this very same way the lord who cares for his devotees even though they make they regard the world as a source of happiness graces them by cutting asunder their mental attachment to the world by ensuring that they experience no happiness there Ah oh, gee even though they regard the world as a source of happiness he graces them by cutting asunder their mental attachment to the world by ensuring they experience no happiness there verse 11 When that child is stopped from picking up a snake it cries in disappointment if a soul is erroneously attached to the material world then when it loses possessions it suffers grief however shri krishna is all knowing and so breaks that selfish attachment by not letting their possessions increase and by removing possessions they already have the father in his love for the child takes the snake away and then the innocent child begins to cry because he was not allowed this plaything in the same way When the Lord graces a soul attached to the world by removing their possessions, that soul in its egotistical possessiveness suffers grief and does not accept this as the Lord's grace. The all-knowing Lord regards his, his devotees as his own offspring and liberates them from this delusion. There is a story in the Puranas or ancient texts about this. The sage Narad ji decided he wanted to get married. A princess was having a swayambara where she would choose her own husband. and it was attended by kings from all over the country naraji decided he would like to attend and knowing that the princess would garland and marry the man she chose realized he would need to look very beautiful to please her he decided he would need to look as beautiful as the lord and so approached him with his purpose the lord welcomed him and asked naraji the reason for his visit naraji said i am yours please do whatever is good for me but if you give me your form the princess will marry me The Lord smilingly replied, "Yes, I will do what is good for you. Go. I have given you my form." Naraji in the grip of infatuation did not understand the Lord's disguised words. He proceeded to the marriage arena, but Sri Takuji had given him the crooked face of an ugly old monkey. Naraji in his lustful ignorance thought he was as lovely as the Lord and presented himself again and again to the princess. All the people present there were laughing to see that crooked-faced monkey, but the infatuated Naraji did not know why. Then the Lord himself assumed the form of a king and went there. The princess immediately garlanded him to marry him, and the Lord took her away. Naraji was very disappointed, but then someone told him to look in the mirror. When he saw his ugly monkey face, he became very angry with the Lord for making such a public fool of him. 
The Lord explained his purpose to Naraji, who then understood Naraji, was a great ascetic, but then Cupid, together with his entourage of spring, the fragrant breeze, and celestial maidens, etc., attacked him in order to break his vows. Naraji was not swayed and Cupid was defeated, but then Naraji became very proud of his victory, and it was then that the Lord removed his pride. Similarly, the Lord removes worldly attachment from his devotees. Verse 12. In the debate between the earth and Sri Shesha, the latter calls Sri Krishna the enemy of sansara or worldly involvement. Just thinking of him can destroy the devotee's attachment to such mundane matters. Tika 12. The Lord's form itself can release the embodied soul from its worldly attachment and so can his name. When the gopis saw Sri Krishna's lovely form curved in three places, they left their world, the scriptures, husband, children and home to worship him. Similarly, by the Lord's name alone, Ajamil and others were liberated. Those who mould their world to serving the Lord are far removed from worldly illusion. The Lord dallies in many pastimes, and those who contemplate his actions are kept far away from worldly grief. Sri Krishna considers, If my devotees leave their worldly involvement and come to me, then this is good. This is the Lord's opinion, and it is thus stated in the debate between Dharani, the earth, and Shesha. Shesha says, Sri Krishna is the enemy of worldly grief and removes worldly attachment from his devotees. Sri Krishna's form, name and pastimes easily keep the devotees away from worldly involvement, and this is for their best benefit. We're pausing here today until tomorrow, um, when we'll continue with the reading of Sri Hariraiji Bodhisattva Patra, starting with verse 13. Archke Ananda Ki Jai Ho, Sabvaishnava Anko Jai Shri Krishna, Shri Shri Rasvihara Niju Vijayate, Shri Valabhadi Shaki Jai.